Next, before we continue on with the interface navigation here, I want to just show you a couple of important preferences. Now, there's a lot of preferences in here. A lot of these things are not necessarily going to mean much to you at this point, but there are a couple here that I want to show you in particular. And one of those is appearance. And the important thing here is this slider, which lets you adjust the brightness of the interface and kind of the contrast of the text against the interface and so forth. I prefer to keep it a little bit lighter with dark text, but you may prefer darker with light text. And that is just up to you, of course. The other thing here is a good thing to know is that autosave is typically not on by default. And I think it's a good idea to do an autosave. And what this is going to do is stash this in a separate folder on your drive and will save iterations of your project every interval that you have set here, 20 minutes or whatever it might be. And the number of projects here is the maximum number it will save before it dumps the very first one and replaces that with the most recent one. So you'll have five iterations here. Again, if you just click and drag on this, you can slide that up and set that to whatever value you want. Five is a good number. You may want to save more frequently than 10 minutes, depending on how intensive the work you are that you're doing. But 20 minutes anyway is the default. And I'm just clicking and dragging with this little slider here. Another thing to know here is that you should generally leave these memory preferences as the default settings. Now, the thing about After Effects is that After Effects CS5 is a 64-bit application, which means it requires a 64-bit OS. And so that is basically Mac OS X 10.57, I think, or later, or the current Snow Leopard version 10.6, or those various versions of Windows that are available in 64-bit versions, Vista and Windows 7 specifically. You need a 64-bit system to run After Effects at all. So make sure that if you're trying to work with After Effects that, you, in fact, you do have a 64-bit system. And the advantage of that is that After Effects is now able to use much greater amounts of RAM than it was to previously in the 32-bit version. There, I think the maximum was basically 6 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, something like that. And now it can use, oh, well up into the hundreds or even thousands of gigabytes range of RAM, of which, of course, nobody has installed. So, in fact, now you can easily work with 32 gigabytes of RAM or more. And the thing about After Effects is that it is quite RAM intensive, especially when you start doing RAM previews and that sort of thing that we'll take a look at shortly. However, you'd also do want to make sure that you've got RAM available for other programs as well. So here you can see I've got a maximum of three here in my MacBook Pro. And this is caching, or basically it's setting aside a certain amount of RAM for other applications, including the system and that sort of thing, other programs that may be running. And this is now leaving one and a half gigabytes available for After Effects and these other programs that in fact are not running at this point. So here you can adjust this to a certain extent by adjusting this available RAM for other applications, that reserved RAM, but it's, you have to be careful doing that because you want to make sure you don't set that number too low. There may be occasions when you want to give yourself more memory, which you would do by adjusting this down, but you can't set that too low, otherwise you'll starve your other applications and they'll start hitting the drive a lot. They'll start caching their memory to the hard drive instead of using RAM and it'll slow the whole system down significantly. Finally, the last thing I want to do is just show you here the output settings. If you have multiple audio hardware, you can specify which of those hardwares to use in After Effects independently of the system settings. Or if you have it set to system default, then the system settings will take precedence there. So. Those are just a couple here that I wanted to show you. Now, as we move on in the next video, let's look at some of the other windows here and what's going on there.